This video will be an introduction to concentration, which is how we quantify how much solute we have in a solution. And it will go into a little bit of detail on one type of concentration called amount concentration. So when we talk about concentration, we're going to be dealing in the context of solutions. And the concentration of a solution is the amount of solute divided by the total amount of solution. So for example, if I dissolve some sugar in my coffee, then the concentration is the amount of sugar divided by the total amount of coffee after the sugar is added. So that's the total including the sugar. It's not necessarily the same as the amount of water. Usually it's close, but we'll talk about that a little more later. Now, there's different methods of measuring concentration. One of the most common ones in chemistry is called amount concentration, and that just means we're measuring in moles per liter, or how many moles are in one liter of solution. There are other ways to measure concentration, including percents in different ways, or parts per million, but it's important to keep in mind that all of these are a measure of how much solute is dissolved in how much solution. And for this video, I'm going to focus on the first one, so amount concentration. So let's walk ourselves through a little thought experiment while we investigate amount concentration. Let's suppose you're a real coffee addict, and so you prepare your coffee in one liter pails. So if we want to talk about the amount of sugar you have dissolved in your coffee, then amount concentration is a measure of the moles of sugar that are dissolved in one liter of the coffee solution. Now I just want to be clear here, this is not necessarily intuitive, but if you put one liter of coffee into your jar and then you add a bunch of sugar, the sugar will dissolve in the coffee, but you may or may not have exactly one liter anymore. It could be that the sugar you added takes up some more room and increases the volume. And surprisingly enough, it could even be that the sugar you added, and this works for some solutions, interacts with intermolecular forces with the coffee in such a way that it actually takes up less volume after you dissolve something in it. So it's important if you want to prepare your coffee with an accurate concentration that you don't put the one liter of coffee in completely and then the sugar, but you might start with 900 mils, then add the sugar and top up so that your total solution is exactly one liter. So we say, that's just sort of a little aside, but we say that volumes are not necessarily additive. So one liter of coffee plus 100 mils of sugar, if you would measure it in, a, in milliliters, which we don't do for solids, of course, but that that will not equal 1.1 liters of total solution. Could be more, could be less, but it's probably going to be close to one liter. All right, so let's say your coffee has some sugar dissolved in it, and I'm just gonna draw a bunch of sugar molecules here. And for simplicity's sake, let's use the example of one mole per liter. So we want one mole of sugar in a liter of solution. Um, you're not only a coffee addict, you're a sugar addict, we'll say, because that's gonna be a lot of sugar. And let's just think about for a minute what this is really measuring. We know that one mole is equal to 6.022 times 10 to the 23rd molecules, right? A mole is just a counting number. It's just a number of things. Just like a dozen means 12, or a score means 20, a mole means 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd. Sorry, this should say 10 to the power of 23. So if we would have one mole per liter of sugar in our coffee, this just means that we have literally 6.022 times 10 to the 23rd sugar molecules dissolved in the coffee in one liter of final solution of coffee. So it's literally just a count. How many sugar molecules will you run across if you could count every single molecule that's in that solution? So I'd now like to look at two examples of the types of problems you might run across dealing with concentration and amount concentration in particular, and show you some methods how to solve them. So our first example asks, determine the amount concentration, so the moles per liter, of 0.15 moles of magnesium chloride dissolved in 750 milliliters of solution. So now we are talking about 750 milliliters of final solution after the magnesium chloride is dissolved. We're going to assume that. 
And this is a pretty easy, pretty straightforward problem. I'm going to show you two methods, not that both are necessary for this problem, um, but two methods that could become handy for different types of problems. And you don't need to know both. You can choose one that you like. But the reality is, I think they're both so nifty that I just can't resist sharing both of them with you. So my first method is just going to be the unit cancellation or the unit um, observation, I guess, method. So just looking at the units, make our units turn into moles per liter. So if we have 0 0.15 moles, let's just divide that by the number of liters we have, 0 0.750 liters, to get how many moles we have in one liter. And so if you do that math, you will get 0 0.2, and I'll add another zero for significant digits, moles per liter of magnesium chloride. So we just strictly made our units turn into moles per liter. The second method to think about concentrations is with proportions. And again, this example is so easy with the first example, with the first method that it's not even worth looking at on its own, but it's, it may be worth it for you to think about as a method. So if we have 0 0.15 moles, and that is dissolved in 0 0.750 liters or 750 milliliters, we are wondering how many moles are dissolved in one liter of solution to get our moles per liter. And obviously we're going to get the same answer. We're going to get 0 0.20 moles dissolved in one liter is equal to 0 0.15 moles dissolved in 0 0.750 liters. But just to think about it as a proportion might be useful for some examples. So let's look at a second example that will be slightly more involved you would like to prepare 0 0.6 mole per liter solution with 0 0.24 kilograms of potassium hydroxide. What volume of solution will you prepare? So I'm first going to observe that what we're trying to get out of this is, is an answer that tells us how many liters or how many milliliters of volume. So I need to end up with liters as my uh, final unit. And that's important to note when I use the unit method of solving this. I'm just going to basically take all my numbers, make sure my units cancel, and that I end up with liters. So it might be tempting to start with 0 0.6 moles per liter, but that's not going to be a good idea because you see that liters, which is our final unit that we're looking for, is on the bottom of a fraction. So that's not going to be where we want it. So instead, let's start with 0 0.24 kilograms of potassium hydroxide and let's work with the kilograms until we can get to liters. So I know that I can go from a mass to the number of moles by using the molar mass. Maybe I'll just simplify this even more and turn my 0 0.24 kilograms directly into 240 grams. I obviously could do that with unit cancellation as well, but might as well not make things more drawn out than they need to be. So I have 240 grams of potassium hydroxide. If I use the molar mass, I can divide by the number of grams that are in one mole of potassium hydroxide to find the number of moles. And I'm just going to tell you what that molar mass is. It's 56.11 grams per mole. I have now canceled out my units of grams. So let's cancel out moles by using our moles per liter. And you see that we end up now using moles per liter upside down. We're dividing by it. And so if we divide by 0 0.6 moles in one liter, then our moles are going to cancel out and we will end up with our desired units of liters. So doing the math, we have 240. We are dividing it by 56.11. And we are dividing it again by 0 0.6 to get 7.12 moles per liter, or 7.13 rounded correctly. Um, since we only have one significant digit to report, I'm just going to say 7, and our only units left are liters. So what this is saying is if we take our 0 0.24 kilograms and we make a 7 liter solution out of it, so say we dump it into 6 liters, then we top it up till it's exactly at 7 liters, we will have created a 0 0.6 mole per liter solution. Now I'd like to look at the other method of solving this. So how could we solve this question as a proportion? 
Well, remember, when you set up the proportion, always think back to the definition of concentration. And that was, I can show you right at the top, amount of solute divided by amount of solution. So always solute divided by solution. So we are trying to make 0 0.6 moles divided in one liter of solution. But we are going to do that by dissolving 0 0.24 kilograms, or let me just switch that right back into 240 grams again. Dividing 240 grams in some unknown amount of solution. Right, so the question here is, how much solution do I make with 240 grams in order to have exactly 0.6 moles per liter? We are still going to have to make the units work for our proportion, so we're going to have to turn our grams into moles by putting, by dividing by our 56.11 moles per liter, grams per mole rather, right here. And so let me just find the answer to this part of our problem. 240 divided by 56.11 is equal to 4.277, so 4.277, and our units are moles here. So I can rewrite our proportion. We're trying to create 0 0.6 moles per liter by dissolving 4.277 moles into what volume of final solution? And now I can solve just like a proportion. I can cross multiply and divide, or I can make an equation out of it. So if I cross multiply and divide, there's a little one down here. So I would be typing in my calculator 4.277 times one technically and dividing by 0 0.6. And you'll notice Mathematically, it's exactly the same math we did on the other side of the screen with our unit method, and we get exactly the same answer, and we're going to round to seven liters, that is. And the proportion side might look like more work, and it might look more complicated, but I do find that some students gravitate toward that as the way of thinking about solutions. And so for sure, if you run stuck or you don't know how to start with the unit side, then try the proportion. But either method will work. And we can calculate the concentration, so the amount of solute dissolved in a total amount of solution by using either method. So that was concentration in a nutshell and a little focus on solution concentration, which is moles per liter. And stay tuned for the other types.